welcome back to my channel. Today is one of my favourite monthly vlogs. We are going to be looking at all of the books that I read in January and I actually feel like I got through quite a lot this month. Um, it will be nothing compared to some people's I am sure but uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a book vlogger. I just really love to read and if you do not know, I set myself in 2022 a challenge to read 75 books. Might not sound a lot to some people, might sound loads to others, but I felt for me like that could be achievable. I had 42 in 2021 and I had big periods where I didn't read any books at all. So I thought, okay, I think I can do 75. I'd seen somebody do 100 and was like, mm, this is not going to happen. That's two, two a week. This is just not, it's not going to happen. But for me, 75 seemed somewhat achievable and I got to, what did I get to? I think I got to, did I get to 69 or did then I get to 70, I got to, I got to nearly there and it'll be on my Instagram what I actually got to, but uh, I was so close. So I thought, you know what, instead of cutting it smaller and knowing that I'll achieve it, instead of making it bigger and then setting myself up for failure, let's just keep it the same. So in 2023, I've set myself a challenge to read 75 books. The genres that I tend to read the most of are crime thriller books like detective series. Love, love, love a good detective book, good murder mystery, good crime thriller. However, I'm also partial to a spicy book, okay? She like, we like a spicy book and I like fantasy. So spicy, fantasy and crime thriller are kind of my three top ones and then I'm reading a lot lately about self-help, um, CPTSD, toxic family dynamics and that kind of thing. So they are the kind of books that you can expect throughout this series. <laughs> well there. If you would like to follow along in real time with my books then you can check out my Goodreads which is here. You're more than welcome to add me as a friend. I am new to Goodreads this year and I'm loving it. Like there's so many different ways to find books that I wouldn't have heard of otherwise and I love that because if somebody recommends a book then I can kind of read their review, read the synopsis of it and it gives me an idea of whether or not I will enjoy it. So definitely recommending Goodreads. I have found quite a lot of books that are in my I want to read list and it keeps me, um, it keeps me knowing where, like which books I want to read next, if that makes sense. So often I will see a book and be like, oh my goodness, that sounds brilliant. I want to read that or I'll see it on Instagram or I'll see it on TikTok and then completely forget it ever existed and never ever read it. So now what I do is if I see something that I like, I add it straight into my Goodreads want to read and I can read what other people thought of it. I can read if there's any like triggers or anything like that. So I love that about Goodreads. Definitely 10 out of 10 recommend it. For my first book of January 2023, if you do follow me on Goodreads, you will know that this is number three in the series or is it number four? I think it's number three in the series, and that is this one here, A Worthy Opponent by Katie Roberts. Now, this was bought for me by Adam. It was a Christmas present, and it was a spicy book that he had seen on TikTok, and let me tell you, it's very, very spicy. Um, if you saw my December book reviews, then you will know that I read the other two and had kind of mixed feelings on them. I think the smut kind of took over in place of the story. They're very loosely based around villains. It's called the Wicked Villains series and they're very loosely based around your favourite villains. So if you have a particular character that you really like, who is a villain from a well-known children's thing, you get where I'm going with this, then these books are kind of like the spicy version of that. And they, this particular one was really good. It was almost like the author had taken on board what people had said about not having enough of a storyline or the storyline just being a bit flat and had built in a much better storyline for a worthy opponent. And it felt a bit like, it's very much into like kink and that kind of thing. If you think of like Gotham City, but like a spicy version, it reminds me of that. 
and I think for this one it just had a much better story. Also within this month I read this one by Katie Roberts which is Hook and that was again a really a much better story. I felt like my favourite out of the four that I have read so far was the first one of this month which was A Worthy Opponent. This, um, the, the Beast was a bit more centred around Thrupple. Again, the stories are kind of threading into each other at this point, like you're getting little snippets at the end of each book that will give you a, a teaser as to what's going to be in the next one. And I quite like that because it, it doesn't leave me on a cliffhanger. It rounds off the story for that particular set of characters, but leads into the next story. And it gives me just a little bit of interest, but doesn't leave me feeling frustrated. I believe that Katie Roberts is now finished with this story set, this selection of books. So these two are three and four, and then there's five, six, and I want to say it's five, six, and then the short story. I don't think there's a number seven. But I've got them all, and I'm going to be reading them throughout this year. I've taken a bit of a break from them. I read this one, and then a couple of others, and then read Hook. Um... And I'm going to take a bit of a break from them to read a few other ones at the minute. But I do recommend them if you're looking for something spicy. You're looking for something that's kind of got that nod to your favourite villains. And you want something that is just easy reading. Like the brain did not need to try and catch up with anything. I wasn't trying to work anything out. It was just a good switch off. And there's that crime element as well. None of it's fantasy either. So if you are somebody who likes a spicy book and likes kind of that. BDSM or kink style, but you don't want the fantasy element of like, they turn into a wolf, which I kind of like, then this one could well be for you. So this is number one and this is number two. Next up is How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. This is so different to what I would normally read and I actually really enjoyed it. I think for me, um, there were bits of it that I found a little bit slow, but it all built to a much wider story and I really enjoyed it. I've wanted to read it for ages and I saw it in Asda for, I think it was for £4 or £4.50 as part of their two for seven. Asda have got some great book deals and I saw it and thought, oh, I'm going to read that and then didn't pick it up thought I'd get it after Christmas and then I've never seen it again. So I actually got this one on Kindle and I, I did really enjoy it. It centers around somebody who, if you remember Highlander, but not immortal. So he's not 100% immortal, but he ages very differently. So what Matt Haig did was took a real life condition where someone ages really, really fast and then said, okay, what if we reverse that where they age extremely slowly? So they can last for about 1500 years, but they get old very, very slowly. So whilst they might be 900 years old, they still look as if they're only about 40 or 50 because their aging process is so slow. So it made it more realistic. Obviously it's not realistic, but it just, it added some credit to it. And there was a lot, I thought the, the storyline was quite obvious in places, but there was a lot of discussion and a reflection on humanity and how we treat one another and how we don't learn from history, how we repeat the cycles. So the albatrosses, which are the people who age really, really slowly, have to keep their identity secret and they formed like a secret society. And... Yeah, I thought it was a really interesting concept. In parts, I did find it a little bit slow. It took me a bit longer to read, but I really enjoyed it just for something completely different. There was also a romance element to it as well, which I thought was really lovely. And then there was family ties and healing from heartbreak and that kind of thing. So I thought it was really good. I really enjoyed it. If you want something completely different, that's not like a lovey-dovey romance, that's not a thriller, but it's just an easy going, time traveling read. And I think I quite like history as well. So I think that added in for me, some of the elements that I liked. Like he knew some really powerful figures throughout history because you can't live that long without becoming somewhat well known or knowing how to meet people. And I just felt like it was a really simplistic read that was totally different to anything else I've read before. Okay, 
Next up, Sound of Salvation by I.A. I, 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 Dice. I... It's a two-part. And I am going to read the second one because it ended on a massive cliffhanger and I feel like I can't not read the second one. But I'll be honest, I feel like TikTok did me dirty with this one. It was a TikTok spicy book that I found and was like, okay, got kind of that brother's best friend trope. And I thought, mm, okay, I'll, I'll give it a go. Everybody's raving about it. It did not do it for me. It was just very lacklustre, just very poorly written in places like note to authors if you have a brother and sister or sister and sister or brother and brother they don't call each other bro or sis where has that come from never in the history of anything have i ever known that happen and it just made it seem quite juvenile writing and didn't really do it for me i also thought the spice was pretty bland at best Maybe it's because of the other books that I read that I thought it was bland. Maybe it was just normal. But it didn't do it for me. It did have an interesting element of past toxic relationship. The main female protagonist is running from an abusive relationship when she meets the brother's best friend at the brother's wedding or surrounding the time of the brother's wedding. That's what she's come over for from America back to England. And I did think that that element was quite interesting because there's drug abuse and a previous toxic relationship that without spoiling too much has a big thread throughout and then has a big part in the cliffhanger at the end and i did think that that was something that was a bit different to what you normally see so that could be what saved it for me was that additional element but i just felt really frustrated with it i didn't think the writing was great and i thought it was pretty average had it not ended on such a cliffhanger i would have read this i wouldn't read the second one I absolutely wouldn't but I kind of want to know where it ends even though I know where it ends I know where it's going but I want to know where it's going you get me out of five I think I'd have given it maybe two stars I just didn't rock my world next is my only self-help book throughout January which is appalling I normally read much more of those kinds of books but I think I just got carried away with my novels and it was Own It by Jessica Jones aka the fat funny one Jess is absolutely brilliant and I adore her but this was brilliant if you are looking to boost your sense of self-worth boost your confidence and become your inner hype woman I really loved the way she wrote it it was realistic there was nothing sort of wishy-washy or like oh we need to do more of this or more of that it was all very down to earth very realistic very normal it wasn't like attempting to be some kind of high-fiving motivational speech book it was just giving you realistic information and solutions to help build your confidence and build your inner hype woman and i loved that i loved that i felt i related to so much of what she said and so much of what she said felt realistic and felt within my scope of ability it felt like it was something that i could implement the book was super easy to read as well and it also gave you guided journal prompts uh, after each chapter so i loved that so whether you are struggling with your confidence at work whether you are struggling with your body image all of these different things she had a section that would encourage you to deal with that in a really practical easy logical way and it just felt really achievable to me i loved it i felt like i could do certain things that she was saying and it wasn't going to be like go off to a retreat and give yourself self-love or any of that crap that's just not realistic for a mum of three who's got her own business to run it felt like stuff that i could do like sit down and write a letter to my younger self might sound a bit kooky and she acknowledged that she acknowledged that certain things that she was saying might sound really like uh -huh, woo -woo, to you if you've not gone down that route before and I loved that because I think so often we forget like I talk about a mental health journey but five years ago if I'd have heard myself say mental health journey I'd have been like uh -huh, okay Oprah I thought it was weird like and a bit kooky and a bit odd 
but now some of the things that I hear myself say I think it's easy to forget how I would have looked at that before I started down this road and I really really loved the way that Jess wrote I loved the way she made it so easy to relate to I just thought it was a banging book especially if you are struggling with your self-confidence and you want that bit of a boost and you want to learn those tools to love yourself a bit more okay next up we're bringing the controversy Prince Harry Spare mm, yeah okay I know okay so arguably the most controversial book of the year so far and possibly the most controversial book uh, of the year full stop I think it's gonna be one of those books that is really divisive but it's a no-brainer as to why I wanted to read it there is a lot of talk of estrangement and Harry's estrangement from his father and his brother and whether or not you are interested in his story in particular or whether or not you're a royalist or anti-royalist, whatever, whether or not you think that he is a really overprivileged guy who just needs to shut up, I found it really, really interesting from an estrangement point of view and from the way in which people reacted towards the book. It was like, or if you're still talking about it, you're just trying to drum up drama, you're just trying to cause problems. And I was really interested in reading the book and reading about his experience. I couldn't give a hoot about him or about um, the royals. It's just not, it's not my bag. I don't have any particularly strong feelings about it either way. But I do feel very strongly about estrangement and the way in which people reacted towards this book about estrangement about becoming estranged the way in which even me talking about estrangement still got messages from people saying i just think it's really sad that he's not with his brother anymore what like huh? and it baffled me it baffled me that people seemed to flip with these particular relationships because it was a father and a son and a brother and a brother and I found it really, really fascinating. But one of the things that I thought was really interesting is the media reports were like, oh, it's just him slating his family. I didn't really feel like he slated anybody at all. I thought that he pointed out certain behaviors that he didn't find acceptable. And I thought that he complained a lot about the institution. And I thought at times he sounded like he didn't quite acknowledge his own privilege. Like for a lot of us who've been in emotionally abusive homes or who have been in toxic behaviour situations, just disappearing off to Botswana for a six month tour or a three week tour, ain't it. <laughs> You've just got to stay there and deal with it. And I felt like sometimes he really didn't grasp that that was not normal. He really didn't grasp that that, that was very privileged. But equally, the only thing that he actually really slated was the media and what he did was hold a lot of question marks over the way in which the institution runs and the media in the British public, uh, the media sways the British public rather as opposed to actually just sat there being like my dad's a dick there was none of that and I thought it was really interesting actually having read it how much the media made out that he was like on some vengeance path against his father and his brother when he really didn't slate them at all so I th I thoroughly enjoyed it I thought it was a really really good read I thought it was really interesting I'd seen in one interview that he did he was like I don't have a disorder I don't have anything like but then he talked about PTSD in the book and there's a hundred percent some CPTSD in there from his childhood and from growing up in such a complex and traumatic space um, especially with his mother dying with the stigma around showing emotion and all those things so I found it really interesting I thought it was a really good read and I thought it was a I, I never understood why people have a problem with other people writing their own story in their own words because so many books have been written about him and about his life and about his experiences and he wrote one and people lost their mind it's like you don't mind paying for someone to write about him but you've got an issue with him doing it i don't know and it didn't feel like a money grab to just a tell all secrets they didn't feel like there was much of that at all they felt like there were a few things that were sensationalized in the media like the argument that he had with his brother but as i say you'd have to read it yourself if you are interested in estrangement if you are interested in toxic family dynamics 
but I didn't feel like this was a Harry sits down and gives everybody all the information about the royal family and slags off his dad who is the king. It didn't feel like that at all. If anything, it felt much more about him, his life, his experiences than anything else. Okay, so if you stuck around after me saying that I read Spare and not hating on Prince Harry or having a full out temper tantrum about him and you're still here, hi! Next up is Hex. Now this is by, and forgive me for the pronunciation, it's Thomas Oldehovelt. He is a Dutch author, Dutch horror writer and this was a horror book, kind of different to what I would normally read but I was given a voucher for a local um, bookshop and I went in and I saw it and I was just like do you know what okay that's grabbing me some for some reason just for something a bit different and I think I'm going to enjoy it so I'm going to give it a go and I actually I had very mixed feelings about it so on one side I oh, thanks for that Wilbur Wilbur just gave you a good jostle there on one side I I really enjoyed it on another side the main character that was meant to be the the scary um, witch I didn't find her particularly scary I don't think she was particularly scary at all and I felt like that was intentional I felt like it was written more as an author's point of view of like casting a glow on humanity so the horror was not actually in the witch in the supernatural in any of that the horror was in the way in which we as humans behave in way, the way that we as humans repeat the cycle the way that we as humans treat one another the way that we devolve so quickly into these animalistic ways of being this cruelty that lives within all of us i think that was the intention of the book that was the real horror in part it just felt a bit slow and it also felt like there were bits of the story that i that just never got completed for me like what was the purpose of this storyline and why did it stop what happened to this character why were they bought into it had like a few pages dedicated to them and then nothing and I felt like occasionally there were just little strings of the storyline that whisked off and nothing was ever said about them. The whole picture that was being built up, and you could, I, this is how I've interpreted it, I think you could very much tell, the whole picture with Hex was to cast a glow on the horrors of humanity and on how quickly we lose our humanity and how we can turn into these base cruel creatures that was more the horror than the actual witch and I think going into it I started reading it thinking that the horror was going to be the witch and the first few pages I was like what is happening here I don't understand there wasn't kind of like a backstory to explain like normally I would say with a horror book it would start with like the backstory of how the witch was murdered and what happened to her and how she took over this town and give you kind of like a backstory without going into too much detail and spoiling it but this didn't this started in the modern day and was talking about someone being in the room with them and I was like what I don't what? and then oh we've put a tea towel over her head what I don't I just couldn't understand quite what was happening with that and then it became apparent like about halfway through the first chapter what the hell was going on I did find it really interesting in part I actually think it would make a brilliant tv series but in the book itself I didn't feel like it translated so well and I certainly didn't feel particularly afraid of the witch I didn't feel particularly fearful of her I just felt really disappointed in the characters and I could see where it was going right from the beginning there is a massive trigger warning with this one of suicide and um, self-harm and domestic violence sexual assault there was quite a, if there were bad things in it it was in it and I think it was so much more about the horror of humanity than it was the supernatural and that just took it a bit deep for me when I was looking for just a quick thrill horror book. Last 
but by no means least, easily, easily, easily one of my favourite crime thriller detective series I have ever read is Hidden Scars, Angela Marsons, and this is the D.I. Kim Stones series. Oh, beautiful, beautifully written, such a good storyline, such a good book. It's This is number 17 in the series, and I have devoured them all, and I just if you like crime thriller series and if you like a strong female character who's not kind of painted as this wishy-washy broken person but who is broken but just dealing with it in sometimes not so good ways other times great ways and you like to build a relationship with characters then I feel like so connected to each one of these characters I feel like I know them the only one that I'm struggling a little bit to really get involved with is Penn and he's a newer character I think he came in in like book eight or nine so he's been there for a while maybe even a bit later but there's been deaths of characters there's been building upon things Kim Stone is a fantastically written character Stacy and Brian are amazing and with each crime it just seems to get better every single Kim Stone's book just seems to build upon it it would be my five star book out of the uh, whole month of January I absolutely loved it and I read it in a couple of days and I think as well what I really like is that the storylines they're not so deep that you're like scratching your head and thinking I need to go back to that but they make you think and they're not always super, super predictable. I think with a lot of crime thrillers, it's quite difficult for them not to be predictable. Sometimes they're a bit guessable, a little bit, but then there'll be a bit of a twist that makes you go, oh, I didn't see that part coming. And I love that. I absolutely love that. I think that works really well. But this particular one, um, it did center around conversion therapy and a lot of homophobia. So the crimes were hate crimes. And I think that's always something that should be flagged. I always think that with books, it'd be worth just having some kind of trigger warning on them. So I do tend to put that on my Goodreads if you want to join me over there. I think this was just such a good crime one and if you've not read any of the the Kim Stone series by Angela Marsden then 100% you need to grab one because they just get better with each one and she's on number 17 now and I'm already waiting with bated breath for number 18 because it was just really good. And that's it for January. That is all of the books that I read. I read eight this month, so I'm a little bit ahead of my schedule. Super pleased with that uh, because I will no doubt have dip-offs where I get too busy or I just don't, don't feel like reading as much or maybe there's a TV series that grabs me. But I love my reading and I think if reading is something that you really enjoy something that you find really relaxing it's easier so there's never any pressure i'm not like competing with anyone to read more books it is just i would like to read more because i know that's something that relaxes me something that brings me joy and i know that if i'm reading it'll encourage me to put my phone down as well so i am really pleased with the books that i read this month goal for february is to read a few more self-help books because i like to read at least two or three in there at least two to just try and encourage myself to reflect and to grow as a person but sometimes those novels take over and already I've read one this month we're on like the 6th of Feb as I'm filming it already I've read one this month and I'm halfway through a self-help so fingers crossed I can keep the momentum going and um, another tip if you're wanting to read more and you have a Kindle is you can use Alexa's uh, accessible feature and have that Kindle read to you so you don't actually have to have audible or unless you want the books read by an actual human voice because it is just Alexa that is reading it to you that does not bother me at all but I've had people say to me in the past oh, I can't stand it it really annoys me so you can get Alexa to read it to you whilst you're cutting dinner put an ear pod in any of those things and I just yeah 10 out of 10 recommend using that feature if you'd like to read more you can also get the stories read to you whilst you are relaxing in bed if you're struggling to get to sleep so yeah happy reading <laughs>